is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and the devices that bring them to us. And things are going to get a little sideways in this video because we are going to be talking about Tate mode. According to the interwebs, the word Tate literally is translated into vertical and is specifically meant to talk about arcade games that were cabineted in a vertical rotation. And while it's hard to get Tate mode arcade cabinets into your house, if you have a lightweight retro handheld, you can simulate the Tate mode experience from the comfort of your own home. And so that's what this video is about today. I'm going to show you how to use two different RetroArch cores in order to rotate the screen into Tate mode. And I'm going to show you how to alter the controls so that way you can use the right stick and the face buttons to play these old arcade games. Plus we need to talk about a milestone for the Team Retro channel. So let's dive in and let's get to work. Before getting into the tutorial, I just want to take a minute and thank every one of you subscribers for supporting this channel. Thanks to your support, we have now achieved 2,000 subscribers on Team Retro. As of this recording, the number currently stands at 2,035 subscribers. And while some people may argue that those are rookie numbers by YouTube standards, the fact that you would need a rather large room to fill it with over 2,000 people is a testament to how this channel has grown and I thank each and every one of you for your support. And I'm feeling a little under the weather so I'm sorry if that doesn't necessarily sound insincere or lacks a little bit of emotion, but trust me, I appreciate every single one of you. So. As a way of showing my appreciation, I am doing a giveaway at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead and start in RetroArch. And the first thing that we need to do is just make sure that we have the right arcade core. So we're going to go into the core downloader and we need MAME 2003, and we also need Final Burn Neo. But if you so choose, you can go ahead and download all of the arcade cores. They don't take up a lot of space, and it doesn't hurt to have them just in case you have an arcade game that doesn't run using the two cores that we are working with today. That's one thing I've learned about emulating old arcade games. The cores are pretty fickle. One core will work with one game, but might not necessarily work with another game. So you'll have to tinker a little bit. So let's go ahead and try launching Burger Time. And you can go ahead and just play the game like this, but there is a Tate mode version of this game. So let's go ahead and draw it out. And we're going to do that by going into our RetroArch menu. So I'm going to use a hotkey setup here to enter the menu. And then in the quick menu, we're going to go to options. And then we're going to go to video. And right there in the MAME 2003 core options is Tate mode. So let's go ahead and flip this on. And then if we exit out, you can see that we are playing in a vertical rotation, but the controls are not quite set up the way that they should be. You could see we're still using the traditional controls, but the screen is rotated. So that's going to make it very difficult to play. So let's go ahead and go back into the quick menu and we're going to go to controls. And then from there, 
go ahead and scroll down to port one controls. And then once we get there, we're going to see an option called analog to digital type. And we're going to set that to write analog forced. And then we're going to scroll down and start mapping our controls. So the funny thing here is that you need to set right to left and left to right just because that's the only way you're going to get the proper functionality. And then you can go ahead and change the buttons to whatever you feel works the best for your individual game. I like to keep button one as Y because here on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, that seems to be the most comfortable. But your decision what to map each button to is going to be entirely dependent on your personal preference. And then you can also map the start and insert coin buttons. For this device, I keep them as start and select because start and select are on the top of the device and they're actually very easy to reach in Tate mode. And so that should be it for the main core. From there, you can just go ahead and play your games. As you could see, Burger Time here is working just fine. And we can use the right stick to control our character. And we can use the face buttons to do our button actions. Now, not every single game is going to work with the MAME 2003 core. So let's go ahead and go into the core options for Final Burn Neo. And you could see right here, there is an option for vertical mode. So what we're actually going to do here is we are going to set that vertical mode to Tate alternate. And then we can go ahead down to our controls and port one controls like we did before and we could set up our controls for tate mode so we'll set that analog to digital type as right analog forced and then we're going to do the same thing that we did before we're going to set right to left left to right and then we're going to set up and down accordingly and with this core, there's only one face button that we need to map for fire one that could be whatever you want and then we'll go ahead and we'll save the game remap file. And so here we are playing Dig Dug with the Final Burn Neo Core and everything's working very well. Now let's go ahead and look at some devices that are best suited for Tate Mode Gaming. And we're going to start with the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. You can get this starting at about $149 and this is an android based t618 device that can play quite a bit of retro games but specifically it'll play a lot of these old arcade games very well and it's very lightweight and portable so you won't cramp up or it won't feel heavy holding it vertically for long play sessions the second device I recommend is the Amronic RG405M. Now this device is also Android based and is slightly heavier than the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus just due to the metal enclosure versus the plastic housing of the RP3. But you have that same Unisoc T618 chip and you have a really nice 4x3 aspect ratio screen so you're not going to get borders on the top and bottom like with the RP3 Plus. But with this premium product comes a premium price and you're looking at a starting price of $161. However, at time of recording, Ambernick is having a sale on their website so you may be able to get this for slightly cheaper. And if these two devices are outside of your price range, there is one other system I would recommend. And that would be the Retroid Pocket 2S. Now I don't have this device, but reviews are starting to come out for it. And they are highly favorable, not just for the four x three aspect ratio screen, 
but also for the lightness and the hall sensor analog sticks and build quality and these are priced starting at $99 so if you're looking for something a little bit more budget this may fit the bill and with that I'm gonna go ahead and show off some Tate mode gameplay testing and I'm going to go ahead and stop talking and just let the game speak for themselves So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is Tate mode the way to go or do you prefer to play the traditional way? And this guide isn't just limited to the devices that I featured in this video. If you have a handheld with two analog sticks and face buttons that's fairly lightweight, then you can absolutely do Tate mode on any device that can run RetroArch such as this device here, the original Retroid Pocket 3 in Indigo, and this is the device I am giving away to you fine viewers. Now this device is unique in that the face buttons and D-pad are dome style switches as opposed to a rubber membrane connection. And after this device was released, Retroid abandoned that style of design and decided to continue using rubber membrane. And when I originally purchased this device, Retroid did include parts if you decided you wanted to switch to a rubber membrane connection yourself. So I'll include those parts in the giveaway as well in case you decide you want to open this device up if you win it in order to swap out those dome connectors for the rubber membrane. But to be fair, I actually preferred the dome style connections over the rubber membrane connections. It just feels a lot clickier and more responsive to me. And I'm kind of upset that the 3 Plus doesn't have them. And I also have the original box, so I'll package everything up nicely and I'll format this device. You're not going to get a memory card or ROMs or anything like that. You're just going to get the device itself. And the link to the giveaway is going to be in my video description. 
and I'll run it for about two weeks and then I will go ahead and pick a winner and I will announce that winner on my channel as well as in the Retro Handhelds Discord. And so please feel free to join that Discord as well as the Steam Machine Discord. I am partnered with both communities and that's where you can find me lurking and chatting in between videos. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if this was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.